Hello, in this lecture we're going to work some smaller test type problems, problems that are of a size that could fit into multiple choice questions. We have here, company accepts all major bank credit cards, many of which assess a 5% charge on sales during the card, using the card. On May 26, company had 6,200 credit sales. What entry should company make on May 26 to record the deposit? So we're going to make the credit sales and we're going to have to account for the charges on those sales. So first thing I would think about is cash affected and we're talking about this credit card kind of like being cash that we're charging it on the credit card and we're thinking about how much is going to be automatically basically deposited into our account through this credit card charging system. So in this case we're going to say yes ca cash is actually affected on this. It's not going to go into accounts receivable in this case. We're considering the point of sale basically kind of like uh, cash as of the time that the credit card was used in this case. Then we're going to think about, well, what's the credit going to be? Well, usually it's going to be if we made a sale to sales or income. And so that's going to be the credit that we will have. Now, we're assuming in this, and it's a little difficult to tell from the wording of the problem. That's one of the problems with smaller type questions. We're assuming that this 6,002 is the credit sales. Basically, those are the credit sales that are happening. And we're going to have to pay part of those basically as fees for the credit card. So... We're going to say that the credit card sales was a credit. I'm going to make it a negative for credit 6-2. And then we got to figure out, well, how much cash are we going to get after the credit card fees? So that means that if we have a 6-2 that we are would have received if it weren't for the fees, and then we have fees of 0.05, 5% if we move the decimal two places over. I'm going to go back on that cell home tab, numbers group, and I can show decimals. It's 0.05, or we can go to the percent here. We can then underline it if we want. We don't need to do this formatting, of course, on a quick question, but it's good to practice. So we're going to say this equals the 62 times 5%. That means, of course, that we are going to have to pay the credit card company that 310. Therefore, how much cash are we going to get? We're going to get this 62 minus the amount we're going to have to pay the credit card company. That's what's going to go into our account. So we can also calculate that a bit faster, and it's useful to know by saying if we had the 6-2 and we had a 5% that we're going to have charged on, then how much are we going to get? We would get 1, one or 100% minus 0.05, 5%. And if we move the decimal places over, home tab, numbers, that is 0.95 or 95%. So if we're not going to get 5%, then we are going to get 95%. And that's a bit faster of a calculation and it's useful in many different areas to know that. Therefore, that's how much cash we're going to get. So now we know what the debit is. The debit's going to be not the 62 that we made in sales. It's going to be the 5890 because we're not going to get part of that. The part that we're not going to get is going to be the difference between these two. This minus this, 310, or as we already calculated, this 310 here. And we need a debit to make this work. So I'm going to put in the 310 right there. Therefore, the debit's now at 62 equal the credits at 62 and then we got to kind of make up an account as to what we're going to put this to and we could just call it uh, credit card fees or something like that and it's an expense so whatever that whatever we decide to name that expense something uh, credit card fees or something that's related to the charges of course of the credit card and of course i built this journal entry which in the method that makes most sense to me meaning i started with cash and then i thought about the next thing that happens and then i put in the plug down here the 310 which we could also calculate it with our plug formula negative sum of these two meaning that's what we need for the debits to equal the credits but to format it properly uh in terms of the journal entry we could put the debits on top so just remember that you'll probably see it in the answer key of course like this it wouldn't make any difference if you put the journal entry into a system most systems in a different way and whatever the audit trail helps you to put it in the system i would put it in that way but uh in order to put the debits and credits on top you basically would want to see it like this next one says that company uses the allowance method to account for uncollectible accounts its year in unadjusted trial balance shows accounts receivable of 142,500. allowance for doubtful accounts 1045 and sales, and that's a credit, it could possibly be a debit, depending if we over or under applied, and sales of 1,115,000. If uncollectible accounts were established to be 
9.9% of sales, what is the amount of bad debt expense adjusted? So in order to set this up, we could do this pretty quickly by what it's going to be is it's going to be the sales times this 0.9%. Why did they give us all this other information in that case? So, I mean, we could calculate this is going to be sales as 1115 times the 9%. We'll just say point. And remember, that's if we move the decimal two places over, it's point zero zero nine so if we go to the home tab and we increase decimals it's point zero zero nine or in terms of percent uh nine percent which we'd have to add decimals again nine percent so i'm going to underline that and let's go ahead and calculate that this equals to one million one fifteen thousand times the nine percent and that's the amount that we would put into the allowance now let's think through this because there's two methods to do this. We did this on the sales method, which we would just have to do this calculation and then create the journal entry, um, which would be a credit to the allowance and a debit to bad debt expense at that time. But let's think through the, the information we have because the other side of this, the other way they could have asked this was to make this calculation based on the receivable, which in my experience is actually more common. That's what I've seen more often. So those are the two ways we can ask this. So if, if we think about the, the uh, T account for accounts receivable, I'm going to go ahead and uh, merge this. I'm going to underline this. going to make our T account here and put this on the left-hand side. And I'm just going to call this allowance for doubtful accounts. So that's the allowance for doubtful accounts. I'm going to merge that. going to underline that. going to make a line on the left-hand side of that. And then the the accounts receivable here is at 142.5 at the debit, and the allowance they say is a credit. It could be a debit, and if it was basically um, kind of overdrawn last in the last period, meaning if we had more actual uncollectible debt than we estimated. But we have a credit. I'm going to represent it with a with a negative 104.5. That means the net amount that we believe we're going to get is this plus this. Now, why, why do we need this information when we, we already figured out the answer and calculated this without this information? Well, they're kind of saying if you were to do it the other way to figure out based on receivables rather than based on sales, what amount should be uncollectible, which is quite common, then you'd have to figure out what's already in the allowance for doubtful accounts amount and then adjust it to whatever you think it should be. So that's why this, this becomes relevant. So be careful of that, those two methods on the allowance method. Next one says that a company borrowed 13000 by signing a 180-day promissory note uh, at 10%. The total interest due at maturity is what? We're going to assume a 360 days a year. Okay, so to, in order to do this, we've got to basically calculate what the interest will be. So obviously, we're going to have the amount we borrowed, the principal. And that's going to be the 13,000. And then we're going to multiply that times the rate. The rate. This is how I would do it, obviously. And then we're going to say 0.1. And I'm going to go to the home tab. I'm going to go to the number group and make that 10% or 0.10. And then make it a percent or 10%, however we like to see it. Then we'll then underline that. And the key point here is this would be interest for a year. So that's the key point that uh, people have to kind of get in their head. This times this 10%. If we had this loan out for a year, we would be paying 1300 And that's just the standard way we talk about interest. Whenever we say interest and we don't basically uh, say any time period, if we don't say interest per month or interest per day will be this, it, it basically means interest per year. Just like if we said something like, you know, that person earns 100000 we would kind of assume it means a year in that case we'd have to make some assumption so that's basically what we're going to assume so that means that it hasn't been for a year it's only been for 180 days how do we account for that well if we're talking about days we can break down instead of measuring in terms of years we can measure in terms of days so we can divide by days in a year which you're probably thinking is 365 but uh, the reason they're trying to use 360 here is because it makes it a simplified calculation meaning what does 360 mean? It's, it's going to be 12 times 30. Just if all months had 30 days, just to estimate, that's why we get a nice round 360. So that would, that would mean the interest per day would be the interest per year divided by the number of days in the year. Nice, even number of days, 360. I'm going to go ahead and underline this. 
and see if there's any decimals on that. And notice there are. And so that's not a, um, a round, that number continues. So note that when we do it in Excel, if we use this number, it'll calculate uh, this number, what it actually is, even though we only see 3.61 it's actually going to calculate based on 3.61111. So then if we take that and how many days we're actually in the loan, 180 days. So if we charge 3.61111 times the number of days, 180, we get the 650. So I'm going to go ahead and underline this. And that is our answer. So note that the ratio uh, that we could use, if you're looking at a book, what they will say most of the time, they won't do it longhand like this as much. They'll say 1300 zero, zero times the ratio of 180 over the 360. And that, that almost, that always used to kind of confuse me a little bit more to see it that way until, you know, I got more comfortable with that. It's, it's more comfortable for me to, to multiply it out this way and say, okay, I got it times for a year and then I need to make it per day. Remember that that could be rounded, meaning you could be off by some some pennies and whatnot, and then multiply that times the number of days, and that uh, makes the most sense to me. <laughs>